Good morning, everybody. It is September 26th. <laughs> Check my computer to cheat. Okay. So it's been two weeks, I think, since I made my last video. And in that two weeks, I've been very busy. I don't remember everything I was doing, but it's been a constant flurry of activity. Except for those times when I say screw everything and I just have to play a game to take a break because, you know, you can't just work all the time. <sighs> so let's go backward in time starting tomorrow. Tomorrow, I have my first midterm test exam thing of the semester, and that is in my combustion class. In the combustion class, we study burning things. No, we don't actually burn things. That's not what my classes do. We talk about the math of burning things and crunch numbers to burn things and then know what you get when you get done burning them. And we're starting off with really basic chemistry stuff and slowly working our way up to stuff that I haven't done before. We most recently covered rate of reaction stuff, which I will need to study tonight and tomorrow. Also due tomorrow is an assignment in my dynamics class, which I will have gotten done by this evening. I'm meeting with Ralph to have lunch. Ralph? is a wonderful friend. He's an old friend. I was talking to an old friend of mine who I used to date. Her name was Kim. And I asked her if she knew of any quick way to get some number crunching done so I could focus on the actual work. And she suggested I ask Ralph. Because, I mean, she suggested a program or two, but I said, I don't know how to use those. So she said, well, then try Ralph. Asking friends is the best way to get things done, and I frequently learn a lot from it. My friends are awesome. So I sent Ralph a message while well, I called him, and we decided to meet for lunch today. And by we, I mean I called him up and I said, hey, can I please meet for lunch with you? His girlfriend suggested a website called Wolfram Alpha, which was really awesome. And it helped me get a different assignment done, but I couldn't get it to take derivatives of multiple things that were all functions of the same thing, but not themselves the same function. I'm working with Euler angles. This is going to get technical, don't worry, I'll stop doing it in a minute. I'm working with Euler angles, which has you take an object, and then you describe the rotations of it in space and I'm supposed to be crunching numbers for doing that but when you turn something through an angle like that like you turn it like this and then like this it's different than when you turn it like this and then like this and there's a third transition in there somewhere anyway turning stuff we're describing turning things if you really want to know about it look on Wikipedia And I have to, the short description of the problem is that you do several matrix, matrix multiplications, which gives you something that looks manageable, but still kind of ugly. And then I have to take the derivative of every term in the matrix. There's only nine of them. Wait, there's nine parts to the matrix. But there's some of them that have several terms. Anyway, when you try to take your derivative, everything blows up. And then you have numbers everywhere. It's like they mate and reproduce. And then they realize there's too many of them, so they start killing each other. So doing all of that by hand is really slow. So I'm going to try to do that. I'm meeting with him to learn about computing possibilities 
I know it's possible to do it in Maple, but I never use Maple. I don't know anything about Maple. What I know about Maple is that Allison McCarn helped me a little bit like so, so long ago to not completely flunk out of calculus. It's funny because most of what we did in calculus was not all that important, but it's finally come back ten years later. What else have I been doing? Okay, enough of homework that is due. What did I do yesterday? Well, yesterday I went grocery shopping with Fancy Pants. And then, after we went grocery shopping, I did some work, a little bit of work. I did a lot of work. I had a MATLAB programming assignment. I've got to practice this talking more. These videos are good for that. Oh, and the men are changing the roof of my building. You might hear the occasional thumping or something falling off the roof. That's them. Well, them throwing things off the roof, not falling off the roof. So, Fancy Pants and I went shopping for food yesterday. I got a gallon of milk and some apple juice. I didn't need much. Felt kind of bad, but you know, that's how it goes. And then on Saturday, Fancy Pants and I went shopping. We went to Target, but none of the things I was looking for were available at Target. Well, none of the things I was really looking for. I went, I was looking for a bathrobe. And yeah, because I wanted something that would be kind of warm. And that I could wear without having to bother with getting completely dressed all the time in my own apartment. <sighs> what else did I go there after? I was looking for more games to share with my friends, and they have games at Target, and one or two of them looked sort of interesting, but I ended up not buying them, because they didn't look that interesting, and you don't want to pay 25 bucks for something that you might play a little bit. I saw Apples to Apples there, but that one, I like it, but it's not compellingly interesting. I do like apples to apples. <sighs> so she suggested we go to the mall since they don't have things like Dvorak keyboards either. And they also, I'm looking for a shelf to put my cards on so that they're more organized. And it was difficult to explain to her what the problem is. The boxes are huge. They're like two feet by two and a half feet or something. They might be bigger than that. And they're deep. Like four inches deep. And the problem is that my cards either all live in their boxes, stacked on top of each other neatly, on top of a chair that I've been using as a kind of shelf, or they live all over my floor because there's not anywhere else to put them and putting them up is kind of a headache so what I'm looking for is something that will make it fast and simple and easy to get to them and put them up and if I don't hurry up I'm not going to get through the past two weeks okay so we went shopping, ended up getting a bathrobe, spent way more on it than I thought I would because fancy pants. It's not her fault, but her influence is that she likes nice things and makes them seem appealing. And it was on like super duper super sale, and it wasn't until I got home that I realized it's still more... It was kind of like on the fringe of what I was willing to pay, which I guess is exactly where they wanted it to be. So I paid 30 for it, but it looks very nice. 
I'll wear it next time with a t-shirt. Okay, what else did I do? Last Friday, I had a computer programming MATLAB assignment due. Woohoo! Yeah, didn't I have one due this Monday? There's a story to that. Alright, it was originally due last Wednesday. The professor gave us an extension last Monday and made it due Friday, which was great because I also had an assignment due last Tuesday, which I didn't think I was going to get done, and I got it almost done. I had part of a single question left to answer, but it was one that I'd gotten hung up on. I got the vast majority of the assignment done. The one I got hung up on was one that every single day people were asking about because it's kind of convoluted and not like the others. It had to do with a uh, motion along a collar and the problem isn't that we didn't know how to do it but that he insisted that we use his methods that he's been deriving in class to do it. Which makes it a lot harder. A lot of the problems he gave us were originally two-dimensional problems, which he sort of kind of turned into three-dimensional problems. You could do them using two-dimensional planar dynamics, but he wanted us to do them using three-dimensional dynamics. But that gives you another dimension. And this particular problem when you do it in two dimensions, you only have two unknowns because you know the other one is zero. When you do it in three dimensions, you have three unknowns, which makes it more complicated. You can still do it, but you have to add an additional equation and it's longer. Anyway, the programming was due Friday, which meant that I both got that homework done and I got to work on the thing that was going to have been due Wednesday. Also last week I did not end up with a combustion assignment like I thought I was going to have due on Thursday, so I didn't die. <sighs> that was good. Although we do have this test Tuesday. Excuse me. It's 10.42 right now and I'm not a morning person. <laughs> Okay, so this programming assignment, which we program in MATLAB, is in my optimization class. And the whole assignment is not a programming assignment. It's just that you need to do a little bit of very basic programming in MATLAB to get through it. And I was not as familiar with MATLAB as I wanted to be. I studied it some this summer but I still wasn't really ready to write programs. I ended up writing functions for the record, but I'll get to that. But the AIAA, which is our student professional organization, all of the professionals belong to it. So they start by getting the students to belong to it, kind of helping them transition. Um, picking up a little bit of money along the way since most of us don't do much with it. But anyway, the local AIAA chapter was putting on a lecture. The students were teaching the programs that you use in lab and they were specifically going over tech plot, which I didn't need but I was there for anyway, and MATLAB. And I learned a lot about TechPlot that I didn't already know. And then for MATLAB, my nose itches. What's up with that? For MATLAB, they had a whole bunch of stuff. And I didn't let him get away with not covering the material he intended to cover. He got to one point and he was like, oh, we're getting near time. Are there any questions? And I was like, yeah, basically, can you finish? What was that at the top of the function? How does that work? Explain that. And does that have to be at the top of every function? <sighs> but they went over coding. They went over 